Spoiler alert, did you watch the Netflix series Receiver? Type W for watch, type D for didn't. And if you're like, hell yeah, man, I watched the whole thing, let me know down below what you're thinking. Coming up on today's show, I'm going to be going through and giving you my two cents of everything I thought about episode one and episode two of the Netflix series Receiver. Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Reds, your host of the Raiders Report. And I'm going to be breaking down my favorite moments around Devontae Adams from the Netflix receiver show. I'm not going to talk about George Kittle, Debo, Samuel, Amara, St. Brown. I'm not going to talk about Jetta. This is the Raiders Report. We're focusing on Tay. My plan was to be able to watch episode one and then do a show like I'm doing now, being able to break it all down for you. I was hoping I'd be able to get eight shows out of the Netflix series and tomorrow, live on the Raiders Report, Friday, I'm going to be breaking down probably episode three and four. The reason why that I say probably is because of the way that this show was set up. So spoiler alert, my notes that you're going to see are in order of how the show kind of went. Because last night I was sitting there watching the show with Alex. Chuck loved it, by the way. And I'm just taking notes of everything that I saw, everything that I documented. So that's kind of how this show is going to go. The reason why this entire plan that I had around making shows around the Netflix series has been kind of thrown out the window. And the biggest spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it yet, Devontae Adams and Justin Jefferson aren't even in episode one. It's only Kittle, it's only Debo, and it's only Amara St. Brown. Quite frankly, I actually dislike very much that you don't see every single player in every single episode. So the Devontae Adams part start with his daughter's fourth birthday, and it was a dinosaur-themed birthday, which, for those of you that do not know, I love dinosaurs. Jurassic Park's probably one of my favorite movie series of all time, and in case anybody wonders, my top three favorite dinosaurs of all time, coming in at number one, it's Velocity. Velociraptor at number two, Spinosaurus, and then at number three is a T-Rex. Velociraptor has got to be the coolest freaking animal out there. I would love to have a pet raptor, but then again, I don't know if I could control it like my guy Blue. So I want to know down below, what is your favorite dinosaur? I am a kid at heart. I know I'm 31 years old, but you know what? If you don't like dinosaurs, then you're just a weirdo flat out. Let me know down below your favorite dinosaur, and hey, you know, if you want to tell me why, I'd appreciate it. Next thing coming up here was Tay used to do his wife's math homework. Tay literally said he was like, my wife is mathematically challenged, and like he said that she went from an F Got the grade up to a D, and everybody, Devontae's name, his wife's name begins with a D, their kid's name begins with a D, so they're like, hey, maybe it was meant to be after all. Justin Jefferson, in a very interesting part, which his alter ego I thought was weird, he said that Devontae has the best release in football, which I do think is a fact. When you watch Devontae in that like phone booth, that first two, three yards, that step, nobody gets the separation that he does. Tay also mentioned at the birthday party that right now he's got two girls, and they have one of the most beautiful families out there, and I love the outfits that his wife had picked out for their daughter. Also, then he was saying, that, you know, hey, he wants a baby boy, so we could see Devontae trying to have another kid here down the road. Also went on to say that Crosby and Devontae call each other their twin. Devontae said, Max Crosby, that's my twin. Then Max, he's on, he makes a little bit of an appearance there, looking fly as all hell, and then he goes, yeah, Devontae, that's my twin. Tay also said that the handwork that he likes to do for the upcoming years and like all the the work that he does reminds himself a lot of like what Max does, who's just violent with his hands, and also says that like a lot of the reasons why he's so good with his hands early on getting off that block is because he does a lot of like the things that defensive linemen do. So if there's any young receivers out there watching, it's not a bad thing. Look at what your defensive linemen do, get your hand worked down. Max and Tay wore the same Louis Vuitton outfit and to do this not only once, but to do it twice, I think just goes to show again that these guys are thinking the same way, they're talking, because if you show up with the same outfit, that's wild. But for you to do it on the same game day, now I don't have a picture of the outfit that both of these guys wore on game day, but as you can see based on those photos, they did at one point wear the same Louis V outfit, and it was funny because Max, or Devontae after the one game, told his wife, he's like, guess what Max wore? And she guessed it. Why? Because they're on sync. So then Devontae and Crosby, like I said, they have now done it twice. And the time that they have been together as teammates, they have shown up to the same game wearing the exact same outfit. And you know what? I got to know who wore it better. Do you think Crosby looked better in the outfits? Or do you think Devontae Adams 
look better in the outfits. Type 98 for Crosby. Type 17 for Adams. Crosby, you know you're my guy. But, like, I think Devontae looked a little bit better, so I'm going to go with 17s down below. Let's keep it rolling here on some of my Netflix receiver takeaways around Devontae Adams. The highlight of Tay's fourth and one touchdown from Jimmy Garoppolo was the next thing that ended up popping up in the show. And when I watched it live, I kind of forgot how just horrendous of a throw it was that Jimmy made the ball down the field. And it's why I continue to say I can throw a football further than Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm very confident that I can do it. But I also forgot how just unbelievable Tay was in this game. Dude saw 20 targets, brought in 13 of them for 172 yards, two touchdowns, with Jimmy Garoppolo, and then I think another stat that's extremely impressive, nine first down catches in one game, and yet the Raiders still were unfortunately not able to win this one. Now, if you guys want to be able to tune into every time I go live for a watch party, I know we do stuff around Madden, but subscribe to the Raiders Report because nobody does what we do on game day. We had 138,000 people tune in to our watch party last year against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we're going to be crazy during the preseason. We're going to be crazy during the regular season. Nobody partners like the Raiders Report. We do it Oakland style. Subscribe so you don't miss it. Let's keep it rolling here. Speaking of the Steelers, Mike Tomlin, who I do think is one of the most highly respected coaches in the NFL told Tay that man you're a hell of a dude was just really appreciative of how amazing of a player he was which I think is really good for a head coach that's been in the league for 18 years Adams also said that the Raiders were good after three weeks last season so if you remind remember Raiders were one and two after that Pittsburgh Steelers game it was a heartbreaking loss Sunday night football Chugs and I were in Las Vegas really really tough one Tay also where I thought this was a really, really big part of the show on Netflix, said that, you know, I don't got time to wait around. And they made a really, really big part of that. And you can kind of see how frustrated Adams is throughout the first two episodes, or technically just the second episode. And it's a lot of that Josh McDaniel stinks. We kind of know how bad the quarterback play was. And Devontae is clearly upset. If you don't remember what the quote was, it was this. I don't want to act like it's all crazy. It's week three but I don't got time to wait around. It's not a personal thing. I mean, it's a personal thing, but it ain't about me. It's not my mentality to try to sit here and take all season to figure it out. Use these early games like this, establish our identity, and we're not doing things the right way to establish a winning culture early in the season. So we've got to do something to turn that around. When Devontae said that, I can remember the amount of people just being like, oh my God, Devontae wants out of the Raiders. No, what Devontae Adams has done is just be honest with you and with everybody out there because Tay wanted to reiterate these comments and he had his opportunity to be like clear the air a little bit and he simply was just saying something that was honest. I'm not young anymore. I'm over 30 years old. My window to win a Super Bowl is closing because father time is undefeated. I that That's the type of shit that I want from my captain. I don't want my captain after a game that we lose to the Pittsburgh Steelers and Devontae puts up 172 yards, two touchdowns, gets 20 targets. He looks at the media and he goes, we're doing the right things. Because the moment you saw Jimmy Garoppolo start throwing a football last season, you go, oh shit, this guy's really bad. Devontae said it in a little bit of a nice way. And then as soon as that happens, the series then jumps to week four where the Raiders are playing the Chargers. This is the Aiden O'Connell game. This is the six sack game, Khalil Mack, which a lot, a lot of bad memories early on. And you know, Netflix, I think, is really trying to poke the bear here a little bit with Devontae. And it was bad last season for the Raiders with McDaniels. But then luckily, Devontae was one of the lone bright spots. I'll keep on breaking down some of my Netflix series takeaways. If anybody out there wants a Devontae Adams jersey, if you go to that link that you see down there below, chatsports.com slash Raiders jerseys, we have multiple jerseys available. And there is a Devontae Adams jersey right now for $99. Usually, they're 130 Usually, depending on like what type of jersey you get, it can even go up to like 160 there's a Devontae Adams Color Rush jersey for $99. Chatsports.com slash Raiders jerseys. That link's available to you all down in the comments and in the description of the show. All right, next thing that happened in the Netflix series was Devontae hurt his shoulder, and it was due to a really bad throw by Aiden, and I kind of remember how it happened where Aiden threw the ball very, very behind him. Number 43 for the Chargers, I forget his name, made the tackle, and Devontae lands 
on his shoulder, and instantly he's like, holy crap, I'm in a lot of pain. He said that he felt the pain right away from his bicep all the way down, or I guess bicep up to his trap, so trap, bicep, and it was completely numb, right? I can remember watching, doing the show, and Devontae's like laying on his back, and you can tell that he's in a lot of pain, and like, Devontae goes down with an injury, everybody, it's crickets, right? You're just panicking, you're worried, you want him to be healthy. Devontae said in the show that my shoulder is numb as frick. You guys can fill in the blank of what he actually said. And I think when he, you know, when you see that side and you can actually tell how much pain he's in, because on game day, all we get is that he's questionable, he might return, and then he ends up returning into the game a little bit later. But watching the Netflix series, you actually really get to see how much pain he was truly in and how upset, how frustrated he was because it shows him sitting on the ground. He's got his helmet on, he's waiting outside of the x-ray room, and he's just, he's pissed. He's pissed that he's up. He's pissed that he's hurt. He's pissed that the team's losing. He's not out there helping. Very, very frustrating situation. Luckily, the x-ray showed that nothing was broken, but he did have an AC joint injury, which then later Tay ended up saying that it was the worst AC joint injury that he's ever had. And you're playing football for a long time, especially a receiver. You're going to get some injuries along the way. So the fact that it was the worst one that he ever had, and then he was able to show up just a few minutes later because he got a lidocaine shot. So the lidocaine shot, put it in his arm, he said he was able to move it around. He said he started catching some footballs, and then he was like, all right, I'm good to go. But 45 seconds later, he goes from like, I don't know if I can play, to catching footballs, to going out there and dominating in the second half. Now, we're still going to be breaking down more here around the Netflix series, but you know what? I want to be able to meet up with some Raider fans here that live close to the DFW area. Hey, if you want to fly in, if you want to drive in, I, I think it's going to be a hell of a time. The owner of the restaurant that we're going to, again, it's going to be Saturday, July 20th at 1 p.m., and I'll stay as long as you guys want to keep the party rocking. It's at a Matito's. The owner of the Matito's is a diehard Raiders fan. I actually did a Raiders meetup, which we probably had like 30, 40 people go to back in 2019. It was like the first time I ever like met up with Raider fans in person, and he, was, he called me. I called him. We talked. And he's going to hook us up. So if you're in the area, that's the address right there. Saturday, July 20th at 1 p.m. I'll be there. Hopefully you guys decide to pull up and have some food and some drinks with me. All right, we're going to keep it going here. Tay's message, which he gets done. He catches the footballs. He knows that he's getting ready to go back out there. But he's still like, you know, he, he's cautious. And his wife apparently called someone. I, I couldn't figure out who she called. She's probably just trying to see if he's okay, which, you know, shit, I'm hoping Alex does that if I'm ever down. And he told the person to tell his wife that he's questionable to go back into the game, but it's just not just the shoulder, but he, that he hurt his shoulder. He gets back out there onto the field, and the first person that really, really shows him that he's concerned is Josh Jacobs and Jacobs and the entire team. It was like you could hear a pin drop on that turf field because of just the impact that he has. Tay said that he felt good that his team has his back and that he could like visually see the panic on like the player's eyes not because he likes to see his team panic but you know like you know that that's how important that you are to that football team and that's a good feeling which I don't disagree with then one of my favorite parts because the way he answered it was hilarious Greg Van wrote and looked at Devonte, which this is like one of those things where you're like hanging out with your buddies and you try something that's terrible to eat and you're like dude try this right now. Or you take off your shoe and you're like, bro, smell how bad this smells. Greg Van Roten looks at him and he goes, yeah, I hurt my AC joint back in 2018 and it still bothered me. Devonte in a very sarcastic and maybe even a little bit of a pissed off tone. I'm not saying he was mad, but that's just what I interpreted. He said, yeah, yeah, thanks for telling me that. Like, that's exactly what I want to hear right now, that you hurt your AC joint back in 2018 and it's still bothering you. What I thought was amazing is just like the mental toughness and just kind of just goes to show why Devontae is one of the greatest receivers of all time, not just right now. Zero catches in the first half, couldn't really get the mojo going, ends up finishing the game with, I want to say, eight grabs for 75 yards on that bad shoulder. That's what dogs do, and that's what Antonio, Antonio, that's what Devontae Adams is. He's a dog. Episode two did I think have a little bit of a heartbreaking ending? And the only reason why that I say that is I hate the Chargers. Spam FLAC down below. But seeing how that game ended, because I kind of forgot that the game ended the way that it did. Remember, the Raiders, they're marching. Aiden was playing phenomenal once Devontae started coming back in, started to get it clicking a little bit. And then it's the third, 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 what, three yard line. Aiden rolls out to the right and throws a heartbreaking interception to lose the game. Tough, tough one to lose, but. You know, it, it is what it is. 
And then Adams ended up walking off the field and he said F no over and over and over and over again. I would say my big overarching thing that I saw from Devontae, injuries, very frustrated with how the Raiders offense works, but it was also really cool to see him behind the scenes with his family. That dude's a great dad. He's got an amazing wife. Both of his kids are super adorable and they did a dinosaur party. Netflix show for that export, like that part was really cool. My question is, give me your grade. If you have seen the show, or even, you know, if you heard what I said right here, give me an A, B, C, D, or F, and I want you to grade the show receiver so far. The grade that I'm going to give, I think is going to surprise some people. The reason why I'm giving the grade a D is because how can you launch a brand new show called Receiver, Okay. And I'm also a Raider fan. I know a lot of y'all are a Raider fan. It is like nothing but Debo, Samuel, and George Kittle, the first episode. There's a little bit of Amara St. Brown, who's kind of a weirdo. I'm just going to be real. Like, I, I, I thought he was kind of a weirdo. And you're not going to show Justin Jefferson and Devontae Adams the first episode of a brand new Netflix series that you're launching called Receiver. The two best receivers. You don't even show them. I don't want to watch the 49ers. I want them to be there for Devontae. If I was doing the show, it's every single person. It is a 60-minute show. I'm giving Devontae 10 minutes. I'm giving Kittle and Debo 15. I'm giving Jetta 10 minutes. I'm even it out because I wanted to see Devontae. I wanted to see all these guys every single episode. So the reason why I'm probably going to have to break down episode 3 and 4 is because I'm going to guess episode 3 is not going to have Devontae. If Devontae's in episode 3, the next show that I end up doing around the Netflix series will only be around episode 3.